So this is the BTC 3100. We're going to take a look at this today. Um, it's a battery charger. It has four independent channels and it can charge a bunch of different size batteries and uh, a few different chemistries. So we've got, um, I don't know what all these sizes are, but you can see them down here if you need to read them. Um, but it's going to charge the ones that I mainly use, which is 14500 or AA. Um, but we won't be doing like a super detailed thing. I just want to show it to you, show you the different modes and let you know what I think of it. Now, nothing is boxed now, I've taken it all out. But what you do get in there is this unit here, the uh, BTC 3100, and a charger. Uh, charger, no, a, a power supply, sorry. Um, 12 volt, three amps, and I can't use it because it has one of these weird, is that a European plug standard? I think it is, but um, yeah, I don't have an adapter for that. So I can't use that, but I do have a 12 volt, two amp power supply we can plug into it. It just means that I can't really one, run this at full whack. So I can't charge four cells at the same time, but I can charge two, so that's fine. It also does just charging um, and refresh as well. And it also tests your cells. So not only does it test the internal resistance, which gives you a good idea as to how much current it can deliver. Um, and well, I suppose also the um, how much is left in the battery a little bit it gives you that sort of idea. Um, but it also uh, does a refresh so that you can put batteries in here that perhaps don't really hold much of a charge anymore. And it will do a little refresh, which it, all the refresh does is it charges and discharges the cell a few times. Let's get it plugged in. On plugging in, you can see the display's a bit funny on the camera. It doesn't work that well, does it? That's fine. We've got... Um, Oh, you sort of have to angle this, don't you, on these LCDs? But you can see that um, they all say charge and null at the moment. Nulls indicating there's no battery in here. So let's pop one in, shall we? I've got a triple A rechargeable battery here. So if I just plug that in, its immediate default is to charge a battery and it's going to charge it at 500 milliamps. That's probably fine. This is uh, what capacity are these meant to be? <laughs> These are 750 milliamp hour batteries. Um, and if I change the display, you can do that by pressing the display button. It'll change to volts. So you see, I had to press it once to wake up the machine a little bit. So you can see it's at 1.32. Uh, we can change again and see how much um, we've put into that battery. So that's uh, three milliamps, four milliamps. And then the amount of time that it's been charging for and back to the milliamps going in. Now, I don't know why um, it isn't a constant 500 milliamps, but maybe it, it's to do with the resistance of the battery and it has to recalibrate, I don't know. Don't really get that. Um, and it doesn't really explain it, but um, you'll see that number vary quite, quite a lot on different batteries. So um, it's now 502. So that voltage will start to rise very shortly. So let's look at some other cells and we can do a little discharge test. In fact, I have a battery here that's pretty garbage. This one came out of a, um, a cordless phone. It says it's uh, 450 milliamp hours. So if I just pop it into a slot, but let's change it. So it's, uh, so I can select a slot by pressing slot and it will um, go through the different ones. If I tilt it up, you'll be able to see. We'll put it on this far slot over here and we'll change the mode. So there's discharge. That's fine, we'll do discharge. So let's pop it in. And then it gives us the option to change the discharge current. So if I press current, I can change that. I'm gonna turn it down to 200 because it's a very small battery. So let's select that. I'm gonna press, oh, is it display? I think display, yeah. So if I press display, it then confirms it. I don't know, if, there's probably a timeout. So you can see we're currently sat at 1.13 volts. This thing is going to avalanche. It's going to go off a cliff because it has very little capacity these days. So we've got one milliamp out so far. Again, I'm just using the display button to change this. We're discharging at 200 milliamps. 1.13 still. So we'll leave that for a second and we'll talk about some of the modes. So when in the charging mode, you can select currents from 200, 300, 500, 700 milliamps and 1000 milliamps. Um, but 
If uh, you're only using bay one and four, you can actually select up to two amps. So um, that's pretty cool if you're going to be using some high capacity uh, cells, probably lithium ion cells. And discharging can be uh, 200, 300, 500, 700 milliamps. Um, or you can select 1000 milliamps for the lithium ion cell. So it decides whether you can do that based on the voltage it sees, I assume. You can see we've gone down to one volt here already. It will discharge the cells down to 0 0.9 volts um, for like these little NiCad or uh, nickel metal hydride batteries. When these batteries are fully charged, the nickel metal hydride or NiCad batteries, I haven't even seen a NiCad battery in a very long time. So they're all basically nickel metal hydride ones um, for the, your 1.5 volt batteries. It'll trickle charge them. It'll give it a 10 milliamp hour trickle charge. Um, milliamp hour, milliamp trickle charge, um, which is basically what I do all the time with my batteries. I've got some that are being solar charged and they're always receiving a trickle, trickle charge. It isn't necessarily the best thing to do for your batteries, admittedly, but it's fine and it's fairly common practice. I've heard reports that it reduces the life of your battery. I'm not sure that's true, but then I'm no expert. So <laughs> maybe believe other people. Before I jump into the other modes, I do want to point out that there is a fan in here. I haven't been able to get this to come on yet, so I'm obviously not doing enough, but um, it is temperature controlled. So we've got some temperature sensors on the board down here. And if, it, uh, if it's pulling a lot of current, so if it's charging batteries, then that's going to come on, or even if it's discharging them as well, because it's going to be using some kind of resistive discharge. We're down to 0 0.88 volts here. So that means that has stopped. So yeah, we can see that we're not now discharging. So we're at uh, zero milliamps and the voltage has recovered. So it just stopped. It would be nice if there was a beep, but then I guess that would be quite annoying. And you can see that we pulled out eight milliamps at 200 milliamps. So um, not great, this battery. <laughs> not really meant for high current things. And I guess 200 milliamp hours is like 0.5 C, isn't it, of that um, capacity. So this one's still charging. We've put 43 milliamps in so far. On the, the rest of the charger, we've got like a little bit of detail here about what it is generally, what it's for, but um, nothing else really. These, uh, these vents on the back don't actually go through the case, it seems. Well, no, they kind of do. There are some very small vent holes across here. Whoops, I've just flicked out a battery there. That's a bit annoying. We're gonna have to put that in again. There we go. Let's talk about um, some of the functions this has got. So in standard charging mode, this is going to assume when you put in a battery, it's a NiCad or a nickel metal hydride based on the voltage it sees when you put it in. So um, if it sees something above two volts, it's probably going to assume it's a lithium ion battery. But if it sees something which is about one volt, then it's going to assume it's one of these. Um, it will stop charging when it sees that um, there's like a little characteristic bump, isn't there, in the voltage where it goes up and then comes down again with these nickel metal hydrides. Um, that's how it's going to deal with it. So that's how it does its charging. Um, the same with the lithium ion ones. That's fairly easy. It just sort of waits until it's at 4.2, doesn't it? There's a, a discharge mode here, um, and that isn't necessarily for testing the capacity of your batteries, which is what I want it for, um, but also it's for refreshing your batteries. So you discharge your cell and recharge it, discharge it, recharge it, and you should, in theory, or at least so I'm told, recover some of the capacity of that battery. There's also a refresh mode um, where the rechargeable battery is charged and discharged um, a few times to maximize the capacity. So you can discharge your battery once, recharge it again if you want, but the refresh mode actually does all of that for you. It discharges the battery, recharges it, discharges it again. It does that three times and that's meant to do something magic, I guess, to crappy cells like this one. In fact, let's do that now with that one. So select our slot and we'll change the mode to I'm just going to go through them. Discharge refresh. So let's select that. So we're just changing the slot. It should just um, jump in and start doing it straight away. 
Yep, so you can see we're now charging at 200 milliamp hours. Or it might start discharging, we'll see. Um, there's also a test mode, and this checks the present capacity of the battery. And that's um, that basically it charges the battery and then it discharges and displays a number for you. And that's all that one does. Quick test mode um, is the next one. And that uh, looks at the internal resistance of the battery. Um, and it sort of applies a load and the current reading is, you know, basically it just gives you a reading. So let's have a look at one. Um, let's look at this one actually. So let's change the slot to this one here and then we'll change the mode to quick test. So let's pop the battery in and then you'll see that, uh, oh, if I just press display or slot. Yeah, slot's the one that confirms it. So it says there's no battery in that. Oh, there we go. Just give it a wiggle. Doesn't like. Doesn't like that. But um, you can see that we've got this thing here and that'll disappear when it's tested that battery, if indeed it works. I mean, that's a fairly high reading. So this is meant to be, um, is it milliohms? And that's 2,480. That's fairly high. Let's try testing a different one. In fact, no, actually, let's test the same one again and see if we get the same result. So 2,480, I think it was. What are we gonna see? 214. Now, why is that? Why would it give me a different result from the first time? Bit of a weird issue that I think, but it might be just that the first result is always rubbish. So maybe testing it a second time is the answer. So 214 is what we saw last time. And now we see 456. Not entirely sure that that is real. Let's try another battery. It does depend on the charge state. So a completely flat battery will have a really weird value. Um, this one will not work. Let's see again. No, null. Okay, so that one doesn't work. Let's try another one of those batteries. What are we gonna see here? 428. Now let's test it again and see if we get the same result. I would really like it to have the same result or a very similar one. Yeah, it's, well, it's like a hundred off, isn't it? <laughs> I don't really understand the point of that. Um, so I'm not gonna be using it. But as I said, you can change individual ports on here, slots to be a different mode. So it's really interesting that you can have a, dip, a battery discharging and charging at the same time. So it's a nice little unit. I'm gonna be looking at the possibility of using this for the big discharge test of all these different batteries that I've got, including this beautiful 5,500 milliamp hour uh, nickel metal hydride battery. Um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, this is the, the BTC 3100. Just a, basically a standard battery charger. It's similar to the one that I've already got, which is the Xtar VC4. So very similar styling, similar way of putting the batteries in. Um, but this is only a battery charger, so it does not do discharge. But it's a, this is a lovely unit. Um, but this is just by far better in terms of its capability. Um, but this has more stuff going on. In fact, could I plug that one in? No, I don't have a... I don't have a USB plug anywhere. This one takes a USB input, which is five volts, two amps, which is um, easier to, to manage, really. I could use a power bank to charge batteries with this thing. So um, this one's an interesting unit, though. I like it.